to another bow thruster install. So it's been a few years ago since I did my last bow thruster install in, uh, in the old Crownline 275cc or CCR I think. Um, back then the video I made were a quite short, uh, about 10 minutes, mostly like time lapse, not much about me talking so uh, I'm gonna try this now. Um, and a lot of things has happened since last time. Now we are on board this beautiful uh, Benetou 34 Oceanis. Um, I matured and I changed the V8 gas gosling powerboat to this sailboat. Uh, however, I really need like butt thruster. So this is planned to be a, um, a four episode series on the bow thrust install. In the first one here I'm going to talk about the, um, the planning of the project, um, different types of bow thrusts that you can choose from, what are the install considerations um, and so on. In next episode it's going to be focused on the actual cutting of the, uh, the hole in the hole. Hole in the hole. Um, third one is going to be fiberglassing uh, the tunnel in place, making all the internal and the external uh, look nice. And then finally, fourth episode is going to be uh, the actual technical install. So that's going to be the motor bracket on the tunnel, the, the motor itself, the cape into the boat, the uh, control panel, and uh, connecting to, um, to the 12 volt. Um, power supply. So uh, I hope you will enjoy it and um, please subscribe to this channel. I will try to make many more videos this summer with uh, with my girlfriend uh, sailing here in the uh, northern part of Europe. It's not gonna be uh, nice beaches and sunny weather all the time. It's gonna probably be windy and some rain but um, we enjoy it. Okay, so why should I have a bow thruster in this, uh, as many people probably say, small boat? This is a 34 foot uh, sailboat. And like to summarize, we bought this boat last year. So we had like full season last year and we managed fine without a bow thruster. Uh, we didn't have any uh, major incidents. Only one scratch on the uh, pop side, but that's, that's fine. Uh, so. No, you don't need to have a bow thruster and there's a lot of things in life you don't need. Uh, however, it would be nice in some situations to have it. Um, I got a lot of comments on the previous video um, with the install in a 28 foot boat that uh, I should rather spend my money learning how to drive the boat and, and, and all these. You know what, you also have a in your car parking sensors and all these uh, things here. To make life life easier and i would still argue that you can easily be in a situation um, it could be in your own arena or like somewhere you're going where the wind and current and all that and can make life really difficult for you and as all you sailors out there know that sailing or boating is about uh, enjoying it's a hobby it's about um, relaxing and there can be no more thing more intimidating than entering an arena you don't know or maybe in your own arena when the wind is like from the worst angle and everybody's watching you and you have to dock your boat um, that can be quite quite intimidating so basically that's why I um, well it's not only why because I think it's a really fun project but it, it's a nice, uh, nice feature to have on board your boat. So talking about the different types of bow thrusters you can get, well, um, the far most common is the is a normal tunnel thruster. So because you have like a tunnel going across the um, sideways across the boat, and you have a motor there, and you have a little gearbox and a uh, and a propeller, and that's going to give you sideways thrust that's the direction you want. And that's the probably the most economical solution you can get. Um, it's also probably the most um, reliable. Then, in some sailboats, which has a very flat bottomed hull, um, it's not really an option to install a, a tunnel thruster, uh, but you have to install these retractable ones. So basically, you can retract the entire um, 
small section of a tunnel in the water, and that's gonna um, that's gonna give you your your sideways uh, thrust. They are quite complex. Um, they are quite quite expensive. I think it's at least a four or five x compared to um, to a normal tunnel thruster. And um, but of course, if if that's the only thing, if that's the only option uh, you have in your with your uh, hole design, then that's the one you have to go with. Now we know um, we can fit this uh, tunnel thruster type uh, in this boat. It's a matter of finding the uh, the correct size of it. Um, they come in in sizes from um, from fitting small boats to quite quite big boats. Um, most manufacturers they always have like this chart where you can look in saying if you have a boat that's like this size, then you should pick this. Uh, they recommend this size of uh, a thruster. Um, so for this boat it's 34 feet. Um, side power recommend a somewhat a size between this the SE40 and the SE60. Uh, 40 and 60 is 40 and 60 kilos of a thrust. Um, so I went actually with the with the smaller size, and that's mainly because the hull design on this boat will enable me to to mount the tunnel quite forward um, in the boat, and that will give me very high efficiency. I can still have it uh, quite deep, uh, but because I can move forward, then then you could do on, on other hull designs. That will give me quite um, quite a big torque around the uh, the pivot point. So I went with the um, this little baby here, the SE40, uh, super compact in size. Um, so now we're gonna move over to finding the um, the actual uh, placement of this and what are uh, what are the options to do this on a sailboat. We have a really good option, and that is to use the paddle wheel. Uh, so most sailboats they have a little paddle wheel sticking down. It's uh, always like in front of the um, in front of the keel, and, and since we can see the paddle wheel both from the inside of the boat and we can see it from the outside of the boat, it's a really good reference point. Um, so in a minute, I'm going to do some uh, measurements. It's going to go from paddle wheel internally. I'm going to measure out the, uh, the the bulkheads we have inside the boat. I'm going to make a little drawing. And then we're gonna go outside on the boat and do the same marking, but just with some some masking tape, so we get a, a rough picture on how to uh, or where to to install the uh, the tunnel. So enjoy. So this is the reference point that we can see from the inside and outside, right? So we're gonna use this to figure out where we should put the bow thruster. We have this nice space down here for the thruster itself. Below here we have the water tank where I'm sitting. Mm -hmm. So of course we don't want to drill the hole here where the water tank is, we want to drill somewhere here. It's one meter and twenty to this bucket where the water tank starts. It's one meter and twenty and then from this bucket this one bucket is 83 centimeters. And just for getting the reference of the far forward bulkhead here, that is 75 centimeters. Okay, so basic drawing of the uh, the bolts. Well, keep this down here. So we know that the um, the paddle wheel sits here. That's our main reference point. Then we have a bulkhead here in the forward of the water tank. Water tank sits here. We have a bulkhead here. So from this point, this point is two, oh, three. From this point, to bulkheads, it's seventy-five. Mm -hmm. So when when we go outside in a minute. You can see we have a water line in the boat. Since the tunnel is it's 125 millimeters across, we want to place the same distance below. So imagine the water line up here. This is the tunnel diameter. 
So roughly, I'm guessing, we could put it right in this area. So um, let's go outside and check it out. Center of pedigree. Two meter mark. And I'm gonna make sure it's the 75. So now we just know we need to be like somewhat in the middle here. So, what are the considerations here? Uh, so, this is the uh, inner bulkhead. The water tank is over here. This is the front bulkhead. This is marked the water line. And this is exactly one tunnel depth below water line. So, 125 meters. You should also have a minimum tunnel width of about two times its diameter. That's why I had like this little 3D guy printed. So between here and here is 250 millimeters. And I use this to gauge out where I would get the, um, the load of the, uh, the tunnel. So basically I just grab like the line down here. And this is the line you can see. So, given that we have like the top level here, bottom level here, that kind of like limits like where we want to put it. I could slide it further back, like further down, but I would like to place my uh, my battery here because it's going to be too narrow out here. So so far, this seems to be the uh, best solution. Uh, top of the tunnel. From top of the tunnel, you're going to mount the thruster upwards, and we should have enough clearance here. If it's going to be too tight, you can always like tilt it to one side, so that's not going to be a big issue. So, but before actually cutting, then the interesting part is taking this measurement here and moving it over here. A reference point here. So first, I have been scribing the uh, like the circle line just using a string and a ruler. From I know like from this point down to here is 81 centimeters. So marking the point up here, 81 centimeters down here. I got the first line. So I know I have to place place the uh, the other center hole on this line somewhere. So next point is trying to figure out how far to go. So given this point here is horizontal to water. This is also I could use measure down when I compare it to the red one side right here measure down the center. so that's what we're gonna do okay so that took uh, took a while just to be absolutely sure it's gonna be center for point here and over here it's gonna be center point and uh, so I measured like multiple times from Describing with the, with the string here, measuring down, measuring from this point to here, double checking from from uh, the point down here to a center here, up here. So we are within a few few millimeters. So um, that was a lot of measuring outside. Um, so as you saw, now we have the two uh, center points marked on each side of the hole. So our next step is going to be uh, drilling the two pilot holes and then doing the actual cutting on the, uh, of the, the two major holes there. So, but that's for our next episode. So please join me there. And if you like this video, please put a like and uh, please subscribe to this channel. It's going to help a lot. 
So um, thank you and see you next time. Bye.